Hi, we are going to get started on chapter 14, which talks about the cash flow statement. Now, this is class 37, if you're in Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and class 26A for Tuesday, Thursday. And this is just going to be a brief video on the categories of the cash flow statement. Just to remind ourselves, way back in chapter 1, when we started talking about what financial statements exist, we talked a little bit about this. We said, okay, well, there's the income statement, the retained earnings statement, the balance sheet, and that's what we've been working on all semester long. Back in chapter one, we said, oh, there's also this cash flow statement, and that's required for a full set of GAAP compliant financial statements. You have to do a cash flow statement, but we've skipped over that till now because we were trying to get to understand the basic financial statements. What this financial statement does, the cash flow statement, is it actually um, explains where the cash came and went. All right, just like it sounds, cash flow statement. So why do we do this? Well, because think about what we've learned all semester long. We match our revenues to the period, and we match our expenses to the revenues, and not everything is necessarily cash, right? So. So we have these accruals that we do, and we're not paying or receiving cash necessarily every time there's a revenue or expense. But many people are interested in cash, right? Cash is king. So we do this last final financial statement, the cash flow statement, at the end after everything's done, so that people can understand how our cash changed over the year, not just how our accruals changed. All right, so that's what we're going to talk about is basically reconciling those changes in cash um, and we're going to divide it up into several videos. This first video is going to be about the various categories and, and the, what a cash flow statement is. All right, so the first thing we're going to talk about is what is the statement of cash flows. Up to this point, you've learned about three financial statements. The income statement, the statement of retained earnings, and the balance sheet. Each of these financial statements reports specific items about the company. The statement of cash flows reports on a company's business's cash receipts and cash payments for a specific period. So just like it sounds, how's the cash flowing in and out? The statement does the following reports on the cash flow of a business, where cash came from, the receipts, and how cash was spent, the payments, reports why cash increased or decreased during the period, covers a span of time, and is stated the same as the income statement, year ended December 31, 2016, for example. So, just like the title <coughs> implies, statement of cash flows, How's that cash coming and going? And cash is really important, um, especially when you're doing accrual accounting because, you know, people can acc make accruals that have nothing to do with cash. But if you're keeping a good eye on a company, if you're trying to invest in a company or think about a company, you also want to make sure that those accruals eventually turn into cash or there's some cash involved that they can pay their bills with. So you want to keep up with the cash pretty, pretty seriously. So you have a separate statement of cash flows. So the purpose, why do we do this separate statement? I mean, I can certainly see on the balance sheet this much cash started, this much cash ended. But this statement of cash flows explains why net income, as reported on the income statement, does not equal the change in the cash balance. In essence, the statement of cash flows is the link between the accrual-based income statement and the cash reported on the balance sheet. So if you think about it, revenues minus expenses equals net income. And you recall that we have all these accruals that we're doing, adjusting entries, depreciation. A lot of the revenues and expenses on that income statement might have no cash involved at this point. But we want to keep up with the cash. So the, in, the cash flow statement reconciles net income to cash and it's telling investors where the cash came from and how it was spent because it matters a lot 
Um, if your cash is all coming from borrowing and not from your operations, maybe your operations aren't very good because you should be earning cash, right? Instead of just accruing revenues that are not cash revenues, right? So, so you sh you, the difference in the categories on this cash flow statement tell people something about how well the company is doing. All right, so the statement of cash flows helps do the following. Predicts future cash flows. Past cash receipts and payments help predict future cash flows. Evaluate management. Wise investment decisions help the business prosper, while unwise decisions cause the business to have problems. Investors and creditors use cash flow information to evaluate managers' decisions. It lets you predict the ability to pay debts and dividends. Lenders want to know whether they will collect on their loans. Stockholders want dividends on their investments. The statement of cash flows makes these predictions. Right? So people want to know, yeah, you have this huge net income, but do you actually have cash? Right? Because think about it, if I'm a banker, you don't pay me with income, you pay me with cash. Right? So where's the cash? Cash is king, right? So the cash flow statement has three categories. So this is your first main thing you got to understand. There's three basic types of cash flows. So just like all the rest of accounting, we're going to have some categories. So the categories on the cash flow statement are operating activities, investing activities, and financing activities. So we're going to start dividing our use of cash and our receipt of cash into three categories. What, what did we do with the cash or where did we get the cash from? Was it an operating activity? Was it an investing activity? Or was it a financing activity? All right, so when you look at a cash flow statement, you'll see it's got these three categories so that you can immediately look and go, oh, here's the cash from operations. That's great, right? Because the operations is running the business. You want to see how the cash coming mostly from that. You know, is it from investing? Is it from financing? So three divisions, operating, investing, financing. So you have three last categories to learn. Then this is it. We're done with learning new categories. All right, so let's talk first about operating activities. So when we start dividing out our cash, right, we're gonna, so what we're going to do is we're going to arrange all the cash that came and went on this cash flow statement. And as we arrange the cash that came and went, we're going to divide it into three categories, and the first one's operating. Right? So operating activities is the first section on the statement of cash flows and is often the most important category. The operating activities section re reports on activities that create revenue or expense in the entity's businesses. So your business operations, so if you're Walmart, your operating activities are things like you know, buying and selling stuff, right? Your merchandise inventory. Buying the merchandise inventory is an expense from operations. Um, paying employees is an expense from operations. All right, so that's cash you have to spend to do that stuff. Um, when you sell something, you get revenue, but you also get some cash. So the cash you get from that, that's your cash from operations. It's running your business. Your normal business operations, that's your operating cash. So whatever cash is generated or paid out from operations, that's operating activities. The operating activities section reports on activities that create revenues or expense in the entity's business. It reflects the day-to-day -day operations of the business, such as cash receipts, cash inflows, from customer for the sale of merchandise inventory and services, and the cash outflow for purchases of merchandise inventory or payment of operating expenses. The operating activities section also includes cash receipts, inflows, for interest and dividend income and cash payments outflows for interest expense and income tax expense. Alright, so keep in mind that as you operate, um, you are running your business, so the cash that's coming and going from running the business goes in the operating activities section. Next, there's investing activities. So if you look at a cash flow statement, it's divided into three categories. 
what, where did that cash come from? Where did it go? So there's another category of activities called investing activities. So this section reports uh, is the second category listed on the statement. This section reports cash receipts and cash payments that increase or decrease long-term assets such as property, plant, equipment, notes receivable, and investments. All right. It includes the cash inflow from selling and the cash outflow from purchasing long-term assets. In addition, it includes the loaning, cash outflow, and collecting of long-term notes receivable. All right, so when you make an investment in your company, right, like if you're Walmart and you buy a building, right, or you buy some furniture, um, you're a hospital and you buy an x-ray machine, you're a restaurant and you buy a new oven, you're investing in your company. I know typically we tend to think of investments as stocks and bonds, and yes, that could be an investment. Um, you might... Um, invest in uh, loaning money um, but typically they tend to be more like investments in the company itself like you're buying a building you're buying furniture you're buying machinery equipment not merchandise inventory because that's a short-term current asset that's part of operations but something that's long-lived that you're going to keep um, um, long-term assets so that's called an investment so money you spend on it cash outflow for investing activities and um, when you sell those things like um, let's suppose you bought a fleet of delivery trucks and after five years you sell those trucks you don't sell them for much and certainly your business is not normally selling trucks so that would be some cash inflow from an investing activity because you invested in the trucks, you used the trucks, they were a long-term asset, and then you finally sold them. So that kind of thing. So investing activities are when you invest in the organization, um, uh, sometimes um, other long-term assets like a note receivable. All right. Now, financing activities. One last category of things you can do with cash, right? So we know we can run our business, right, operating. We do that with our cash. We know that we invest in our business. We do that with cash. And finally, we have to finance our business, right? We have to get the cash and pay back the cash that helps us start it, that, that helps us do things. So financing activities include um, long-term liabilities and equities. So financing activities, um, the last category is financing activities. Financing includes cash flow, inflows, and outflows involved in long-term liabilities and equity. So how do you finance your company? Um, this includes issuing stock and paying dividends, buying and selling treasury stock. It also includes borrowing money and paying off long-term liabilities like notes payable, bonds payable, and mortgages payable. So short-term liabilities like an account payable, like I bought some merchandise inventory and used an account payable, that's nothing to do with financing activities. That's operating, right? Um, so financing activities are your long-term stuff, bonds, mortgages, and of course issuing stock, your stockholder's equity portion. So that's cash. So cash you get or cash you pay relating to financing that goes in that third section. All right. So each section of the cash flows, each section of the statement of cash flows affects a different part of the balance sheet. So kind of as you've noticed as we've been talking, um, your current assets and current liabilities, that's your operating section. Right? So as we start talk about changes in cash, changes in cash that pertain to current assets and current liabilities, right? like purchasing inventory, purchasing supplies, um, or unearned revenue, accounts payable, your current, those are, those are related to operating. All right? <coughs> your investments, so, so when you invest in the company or you invest like 
say, you know, as you may recall from the book, sometimes you invest in notes receivable um, stocks. That's investing, right? Investing cash flows. And how we finance our organization, well, that's, that's long-term liabilities and equity. All right, so the operating activities section reports on how cash flows affect the current accounts current assets and current liabilities. Investing activities affect the long-term assets. And the financing activities affect long-term liabilities and equities. Exhibit 14-1 shows the relationship between operating, investing, and financing cash flows and the various parts of the balance sheet. All right, so that's what we mean by saying we're reconciling this net income to the cash flows through the balance sheet because it matches up with these different parts of the balance sheet. So it'll help you when you're trying to decide the categories like, oh, does this cash flow belong in operating? Well, look and see, did that cash flow um, pay for an asset that's current? Great. Then that is related to operating. Did that cash flow come uh, from a, a, a current activity, then it's, then it's current, right? So, so that's how you think about it. Think about what, what part of the balance sheet is this affecting really, right? Oh, I've issued stock. So that affects stockholders' equity. So that's going to be investing, right? So you think about the source of the cash or you think about what the cash was used for and that, did it turn into an asset? Did it turn into, is it from a short-term liability, a current liability or a long-term? And that's going to tell you what what part of the cash flow statement that goes with. Companies, the three sections of the cash flow report, not only activities that involve cash, companies also make investments that do not require cash. They also obtain financing and other than cash. Such transactions are called non-cash investing and financing activities. Non-cash investing and financing activities are investing and financing activities that do not involve cash. Examples include the purchase of equipment financed by a long-term note payable or the contribution of equipment by a stockholder in exchange for common stock. So we just talked about this, right? So there's no cash involved. Um, I think we did some transactions like somebody contributed land and got stock and we issued common stock and maybe we had some paid in capital in excess of part. So you can do things that don't involve cash, depreciation expense doesn't involve cash. So there's things that you're doing that don't involve cash at all, right? Now, these activities are not included in the statement of cash flows, right? So if you have something separate, they appear as a separate schedule at the bottom of the statement of cash flows or in the notes to the financial statement. So they don't, because they're not cash, they don't actually go on the statement of cash flows. Okay, non-cash. Okay, non-cash investing and financing activities. So, Exhibit 14-2 shows you the sections. So, as we start thinking about and putting together um, the statement, what, what you'll receive is information about a cash flow, right? You'll have information about cash flows, and you'll have to decide, is it operating, is it investing, is it financing? So, so, if you have an inflow, cash coming from customer for sale of merchandise or service, right? So something current, you have a current, um, it's coming from the sale, right? It's, it's, it's something from operating. Or it's from the purchase of merchandise inventory going out. It's for interest expense and income tax expense. So it's part of running your business. That is an operating activity. Investing activities, investments are things where you're investing in a long-term asset, right? So you're either spending cash to invest in that long-term asset like you purchase a building, right? Um, or you're receiving it because maybe you, you sold the building or you um, sold stock, right? Um, so um, sometimes there's loans like a, like a loan receivable, you loan an employee some money. Um, that happens, right, they, against their commission. I used to happen a lot where I used to work. People would receive commissions 
and they could borrow if they did because they needed some money but their big commission wasn't coming for a month or two so you might lend an employee money so that's more of an investing activity and of course financing activities that's that stuff from the long-term liabilities or the stockholders equity portion of the balance sheet so if you get cash from a mortgage a long-term note if you get cash from selling stock in your own company Right, not an investment in another company, but you issue stock in your company. Uh, those are in, those are what we call financing activities. How you finance. And then there's some non-cash stuff that is really separate from the statement of cash flows. So um, you just need to be able to pick out things and say, oh, that's that's not even cash. So don't worry about it. All right. Two formats. Now for us, we're not going to do direct method. Okay, we're not going to do direct method in this class, so we don't read that. But we are going to do indirect method. So there are two ways to format the statement. The indirect starts with net income and adjusts it to net cash provided by operating activities. So that's what we're going to do. The direct method restates the income statement in terms of cash. The direct method shows all cash receipts and all cash payments from operating activities. The indirect and direct use different computations but produce the same amount of net cash flow. Right? So it's just two different ways of getting at the same number, right? Because the amount of cash you started with and the amount of cash you ended with is the same. All the statement of cash flows is doing is explaining where which categories did this cash come and go from. And direct versus indirect calculate it slightly different, but you only need to worry about indirect which starts with accrual income, so you start with net income and you do your adds and additions and then you end up with your cash. All right, And it, it uses the relationships to determine the change in cash. So um, really the only difference is in the operating activities section. So it's not that big of a leap to learn direct method, but we're just not going to do it. Because most the reason is that pretty much if you went and looked at any financial statement for any public company, they would be doing indirect. So next video will be a little bit more detailed. So right now from this, hopefully you've picked up on the differences between operating, um, investing, and financing. And now we'll be talking a little bit more details about those on the next tape.